dear students welcome to mathematics online classes in this class we will study the concept of properties of factor addition properties of factor addition two properties are given here one is uh, even third property is also there distributive law first two properties are uh, commutative law and uh, associative law first of all i will tell you what is commutative and what is associative see commutative property addition of two real numbers satisfies the commutative property what does it mean already as i explained in the previous class 2 plus 3 is what 2 plus 3 is 5 in the same way what is 3 plus 2 3 plus 2 is also 5 so what i can write i can write 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2 this is nothing but a commutative law in simple words I am explaining. What about the associative law? Associative. Associative means, see addition of three real numbers I am taking. Suppose there are three real numbers like 2, 3 and 4, 2, 3 and 4. Once again I am writing it. First of all I would add this 2 and 3. How much is this? 5, 5 plus 4 it is. Instead of adding the 2 and 3 first, I will add 3 and 4. This become 2 plus 7. 5 plus 4 is 9. 2 plus 7 is also 9. That means, what I can write here? I can write 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4. I am explaining you, uh, this is means it is associative law. I am explaining you with an example. It does not mean that if it is satisfies for only one example then it is true. We should not consider like that. See, it has to satisfy for all the real numbers it has to satisfy a plus b is equal to b plus a where what are these a and b where a and b are real numbers. If it satisfy for all the real numbers then we say that addition of real numbers is a commutative. In the same way, if it satisfies the condition like a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c where a and b taken first and here b and c is taken first. That means in that case we say associative law is valid for addition of a real numbers. Okay. In the same way, in the same way where a and b, a, b and c has to be real numbers okay now this is about the associative law and a commutative law in general i am telling you just to make sure that what these laws means okay now we will come to the concept of a vector addition is that commutative law valid here or not we will check commutative law See, for any two vectors, for any two vectors, vector A and vector B, we have vector A plus vector B is equal to vector B plus vector A. This is what commutative law is. How is it is true? Let us check. According to the parallelogram law of vector addition, we can go like that. This is vector a and this is a vector b vector a and b are represented by adjacent sides of a parallelogram see i am saying this is parallelogram as it is parallelogram opposite sides will be equal in length sorry opposite sides will be equal equal means equal in length and also equal in a direction and then let me go with end points also a b c and here is a d okay you join this one then what about this dc vector dc is same as a vector a same in length same in direction and vector bc is same as a vector ad this can also be written as a vector b okay now you observe two vectors a b and a b c a b is the first vector where its terminal point is getting coincide with the initial point of the second vector 
basic. Now I can write vector AC as vector AC is equal to vector AB plus vector BC. How is this? This is according to the triangle law of a vector addition or parallel gram law also says the same thing. This can be written as vector A plus vector B. What is this? Vector AC is equal to. Let me take this as equation 1. Now coming to the second condition. You consider the triangle ADC. Consider the triangle ADC from triangle ADC. You observe there AD will be the first vector and DC will be the second vector. Terminal point of a first vector AD is getting coincide with the initial point of the second vector DC. So, what we can write here? We can write vector AC is equal to vector AD plus vector DC. Vector AC is equal to vector AD plus vector DC. Now, vector AC is equal to what is vector AD? Vector AD is a vector B plus of what is vector dc what is uh, vector dc is a vector a ok let me name this as equation 2 from 1 and 2 you observe here also ac is equal to here also ac is equal to but this is vector a plus vector b this is vector b plus vector a so from 1 and 2 i can write from 1 and 2 i can write vector a plus vector b is equal to vector b plus vector a. This is nothing but commutative law of a vector addition. So, commutative law is valid for addition of vectors. Now, we will take the second law that is associative law. Now, associative law. Again, add, add, associative law in the sense of addition of three vectors I have to take vector A plus vector B plus vector C, where A, B is taken as first and B, C is taken as first, like that. Let us take vector A, B. In the same way, I will write here also. This is also vector AB only. This is also vector AB only. Same magnitude, same length. This is vector A and this is a vector B. Uh, sorry, this is also vector A only. Next, from the terminal point of the first vector, I will take another one vector. Let us take this as terminal point C. Let us take this as vector BC. Vector BC I will name as a vector B. In the same way here also this is vector B where terminal point is named as a C vector. Both are same only here. Both are same. Vector BC here also vector BC. Same figure I am writing it twice. That is all. Next what I do from the point C I will write another one vector that is vector CD I will write, vector CD where initial point is C, terminal point is D, let me name this as vector C, same thing I will do here also, from the point C I am drawing a vector that is CD, naming it as vector C, ok. Now what I will do, you see the vector AB and vector BC vector a b and vector b c you see according to the triangle law of vector addition according to the triangle law of vector addition what i can write for vector a c vector a c is equal to i can write here vector a b plus vector b c that is nothing but vector a plus vector b what is this vector a c is equal to this one vector a c is equal to 
and the direction of AC is also very much important. It is directed from the point A to point C. That one we have to be clear. And now this got over. And then again according to the triangle law of vector addition, again, again according to the triangle law, according to the triangle law, you see vector AC is the first vector vector AC is first vector where it is named as vector A plus vector B vector AC is the first vector and vector CD is the second vector yes terminal point of first vector is getting coincide with the initial point of a second vector so vector AC is getting add with the vector CD that gives us vector AD isn't it yes vector AD is equal to vector AD is equal to you can write here vector AC plus vector CD what is vector AC vector AC is vector A plus vector B plus of vector CD means that is C where A and B are added first I will put the bracket for this this is vector AD is equal to let me name this as equation 1 see once again I am applying the triangle law of vector addition where AC will be taken as the first vector, CD will be taken as the second vector. Okay. With that triangle law of vector addition, vector AD can be written as vector A plus vector B plus of vector C. Now I will come to the second vector. Means second diagram I have written here. Instead of adding vector AB and vector BC first, let us add vector BC and vector CD first. What will be this vector BD? We have to write the straight line here. Again here same way according to the according to the triangle law according to the triangle law of vector addition vector BD is equal to vector BD is equal to first vector is BC terminal point is getting coincide with the uh, initial point of second vector. So I can write here vector BD is equal to vector BC plus vector CD. What is this? This is vector B plus vector C. So I can write the vector BD as a vector B plus a vector C. Okay. Now you see, now you observe the vector AB and BD you observe. AB is vector A and uh, BD is vector B plus vector C where again is a triangle law of vector addition is valid here yes according to the triangle law of vector addition we can write vector AD is equal to because uh, this is first vector this is the second vector Term terminal point is getting coincide with the initial point okay this is vector A then again one more time according to the triangle law according to the triangle law I can write vector AD is equal to vector AD is equal to vector AB plus vector BD vector AB is vector A vector BD is vector B plus vector C where B and C are added first I will put into the bracket fine fine now this is vector AD is equal to this is vector A plus vector B plus vector C okay this is equation second from one and two you observe from equation one and uh, equation two what i can write that is also ad equal to this one is also ad is equal to from these two i can write uh, vector a plus vector b plus vector c is equal to vector a plus vector b plus vector c where ab is taken first here bc is taken first this is about a uh, associative law of vector addition associative law is valid for addition of vectors Now, 
we will say one more concept uh, that is additive identity what do you mean by additive identity additive identity my in the same way multiplicative identity also comes uh, i am not going to discuss that one first of all i will just tell you what is additive identity see in case of addition of real numbers suppose there is a number a with this number a if you add the number 0 if you add the number 0 what it results it is it results into the same number again in the same way if i consider the example like 2 plus 0 is equal to 2 only 10 plus 0 is equal to 10 only means what we can say here in case of addition of real numbers we can say 0 is a dummy number you can say 0 is dummy number that means 0 is additive identity 0 is additive identity for addition of real numbers we can say that in the same way in the same way is there any vector which exists like that yes in case of addition of vectors in case of addition of vectors vector a is added with a null vector vector a is added with a null vector this results into the vector a only again if you take null vector plus another one vector like vector b again this is what this is vector b only so what is this vector b a zero is called a zero vector zero in the sense null vector or a zero vector null vector is called null vector is called additive identity this is a additive identity additive identity for addition of for addition of vectors okay now let us take the next concept here that is multiplication of a scalar by a sorry multiplication of a vector by a scalar multiplication let us erase this first multiplication of a vector by a scalar scalar means scalar means any real number okay see there is a vector a like this there is a vector a it has some magnitude like 2 units let me name this as vector a b and it has some length like let me take this as 1 unit only let me take it as 1 unit now suppose you multiply the vector a by a scalar 2 what happens Suppose you multiply the vector a by scalar 2 means uh, this will be vector 2a. How will be the vector 2a? Vector 2a will be same as vector a b having the same direction having the same direction just what is happening here it is a magnitude is increasing its length is increasing again it is vector a b only but what about this magnitude magnitude is it is 2 times that of vector a b means 2 times that of original vector a b if you want you can name this as vector c d also here this is vector c d and one thing you can observe here compared to this vector a and vector 2 a what are the changes only change is magnitude what about the direction direction is same as the old one only change in magnitude what about this vector a and 2 a are they collinear or not yes vector a and vector 2a are collinear vectors collinear vectors in the sense vectors having the same line of support irrespective of their magnitude and direction line of support has to be same yes here also line of support is same and now if you multiply with half for the vector a if you multiply with the half for the vector a what happens here yes again this length decreases length decreases length become half 
as what about the direction direction will be same as the original one because you are multiplying with the positive value c you can take this as vector e f now instead of multiplying with a positive value if you multiply with negative value what happens here let me multiply with a minus for the vector a if you multiply with vector a i mean if you multiply with the negative here what happens its direction changes here and what about the magnitude magnitude will be same as vector ab magnitude will not change only change is its a direction because we are multiplying with a minus 1 sir if i multiply with minus 2 what happens yes we can check if you multiply with minus 2 you are multiplying with 2 there one two number is there so its length increases length increases e f let me take this as m n minus 2 times length increases 2 times of the vector ab and what about its direction its direction reverses because it is a negative one length increases twice and also what happens its direction reverses very simple it is if it is multiplying with a negative value direction changes direction exactly opposite to the first one and what about this uh, magnitude magnitude it is multiplying with how many times if it is multiplying by half reduces by half if it is multiplying by 1 by 3 reduces by 3 times if it is multiplying by 10 times magnitude increases by 10 times that's all very simple concept it is now with this with this concept i want to tell you one thing see suppose there is a vector ab where this is named as a vector a and let me take this magnitude as let me take this magnitude as vector a if i multiply the vector a by 1 by by a uh, 1 by a magnitude of vector a or instead of that if you are dividing the vector a by magnitude of vector a you are dividing by the same magnitude what happens here that gives us unit vector unit vector in the sense its magnitude is 1 okay what about this direction direction will not change you are multiplying with the magnitude that will be the positive value uh, that will be the positive value direction will be same only thing is that its length reduces by 1 suppose this vector a is a 10 units in length 10 cm let us take 10 cm in length if you divide by 10 cm 10 cm in length vector is there if we divide by 10 what happens it becomes one you know it becomes one so here what we say vector a by magnitude of vector a is nothing but unit vector unit vector in the direction of unit vector in the direction of a vector a it will be represented as a cap a cap is equal to vector a by magnitude of vector a this is important concept here say they will ask you the question like find the unit vector in the direction of the given vector what we should do a cap is equal to means unit vector in the direction of vector a is equal to vector a divided by magnitude of that vector once again i am explaining how it is a unit vector once again i am explaining how it is a unit vector suppose there is a vector suppose there is a vector having a 20 meter length suppose there is a vector having 20 meter length like this this is 20 meter length now what i want to do i will divide this vector by 20 how much will be the its magnitude its magnitude will be 20 by 20 get cancelled out its magnitude will be 1 so that resultant vector will be a vector having the same direction but a unit magnitude that is called as a unit vector in the direction of given vector you can remember the formula unit vector in the direction of vector a is equal is a cap is equal to vector a by magnitude of vector a
Okay. Uh, now, here uh, one concept that is known as a components of a vector. Components of a vector takes time, so that will be taken in the next video. Let us explain unit vectors. Unit vectors in the direction of x axis, in the direction of y axis, and also in the direction of a z axis. How it will be taken? Unit vectors, concept of unit vectors. See, I will consider one three dimensional plane. There is a three dimensional plane, it has three axes. This is origin x axis and uh, y axis this is a uh, z axis then let us have three points on the one is on the x axis second one is on the y axis third one is on the z axis i have three points all three points are at a unit distance from the center means origin all three points are at a unit distance means uh, its distance is like uh, one centimeter or one unit or one minute or one it is okay fine if it is one how will you write the magnitude it is along the x-axis you know one on y-axis and z-axis we didn't move so this coordinates will be one comma zero comma zero point on the x-axis it is points on the x-axis will be having only x coordinates uh, y coordinates and z coordinates will be 0. Now, coming to the coordinates of a point B which is on y axis. See, to represent the point B, what we move, what we do, instead of moving on the x axis and z axis, we will not move on the x axis and z axis, directly we move along the y axis. Here, unit distance in the sense, coordinates of point B will be 0, 1, 0. 0 comma 1 comma 0 and now in the same way to represent this point C what we do we will not move along the x axis and the y axis directly we move along the z axis how many units we move only one unit so its coordinates will be written as 0 comma 0 comma 1 okay what about this vector OA vector OB and vector OC are they unit vectors or not yes those are unit vectors because their magnitude is how much their length is how much from O to A it is one unit O to B one unit O to C is also one unit means uh, vector OA is a unit vector in the direction of x axis OA is a unit vector in the direction of x axis a unit vector in the direction of x axis will be represented as a I cap that is the notation i cap simply if it is written as i cap what does it mean it means a unit vector in the direction of x axis sir if it is written as a 2i what does it mean instead of representing it as i cap if it is written as a 2i cap what does it mean it means a vector in the x axis having the magnitude of a 2 units a vector in the direction of x axis i is there you know i represents unit direction in the uh, unit vector in the direction of x axis means uh, and uh, what about the magnitude is two times is the magnitude you know so two times magnitude a vector having in the direction of uh, x axis okay next what about the vector ob ob is a unit vector in the direction of uh, y axis a unit vector in the direction of y axis will be represented as a j cap will be represented as a j cap sir so then if it is written as a minus j what does it mean if it is written as a minus j what does it mean it minus is there na negative is there it means that a unit vector in the direction of a negative y axis unit vector in the direction of a negative y axis and what about its magnitude my one is there so magnitude will be one unit magnitude minus indicates negative or minus indicates it is in negative negative y axis and magnitude only one unit it is suppose it is if it is written like minus 
10 j then what it represent if it is written as minus 10 j it represents that a vector having the 10 in its length in the direction of negative y axis sir suppose it is written 10 j what does it mean if it is written as a 10 j it means that a vector in the direction of y axis having the magnitude of a 10 units that it represents okay unit vector in the direction of y axis will be represented as a j cap and what about the vector oc vector oc will be in the direction of z axis how many units length it is one unit length it will be represented as a k cap it will be represented as k cap oc is a unit vector in the direction of a uh, z axis unit vector in the direction of z axis will be represented as k cap i cap unit vector in the direction of x axis uh, j cap unit vector in the direction of y axis and k cap will be the unit vector in the direction of a z axis in the same way in case of z axis also suppose it is written as a uh, 4k what it represent 4k means a uh, uh, vector having the 4 units magnitude and it is in the direction of z axis that it represents okay i hope you understood the concept of uh, unit vectors now in the next class we will take a components of a vector thank you